to you, everyone. I'm Valley Amon, the New Age reporter, and you are watching Visions. Some of you may realize that Visions has been on the air now for quite a while, and pretty soon we're going to introduce you to a guest who's a repeat guest to Visions more than anyone else, and I think you'll see why. I wanted to make mention to you that it seems as though in the world the way it is now, especially living here, of course our program generates out from Los Angeles and the Hollywood areas and those surrounding areas, people are so physically attuned, sort of a physical, emotional kind of attunement they have. For example, if I was here right now and my hair was shaved down to a mohawk, chances are you would have already turned the channel. So I think we have to be very careful of our value assessments based on the appearance of what's going on. And I think that we always have to be into the deeper sense of what's really going on, intuitively and connectedly with all that is present. So if you can just continue staying open and continue doing your studies, I think you will find that a great help as so much appears to be one way and really is another. I think you know that to be true. Now, Let's go on with our show. Our guest today on the program is Dennis Adams. Like I said, he is a repeat guest to the program more than anyone else. He is a favorite of mine, has great information to share with us. He is a master healer and a teacher, does a tremendous amount of traveling. Let's welcome Dennis to the show. Welcome, Dennis. Hey, how you doing, Valley? I'm doing fine, Dennis. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing as how we have the choice, why not? Yes, why not? Yeah. And that choice seems to be becoming more of a crucial issue with all of us because I think that we really forget that we have a choice. Yeah, we, we forget that we have a choice a lot, uh, especially when we have all the pressure of, you know, our job and, and the world and everything around us just kind of pushing down, you know, it's like, we forget and uh, we just need to be reminded, especially like in these times right now, I hear we're in a recession and you know, people are like, oh wow, what can I do, you know, how can I get out of the recession, how can I feel, you know, better about myself, and all these different things. It's like, one of the things that we need to remember is, is that <clears throat> everybody's feeling the same pressure. We're all feeling like, oh wow, what am I going to do? Well, if you've taken a look around for however many years you've been on the planet, uh, chances are you'll see that you survived. And um, <laughs> you'll also probably remember all the times that you worried about things. You know, you worried about this and you worried about that, you worried about the other thing. I think what we could do is if we would stop worrying. I mean, take a look at our track record. How long have we been on the planet? How have we been doing so far? Even in crisis, we can come out of it. The key is if we can flash that back into our minds now, it's sort of like, oh yeah, I've always gotten out of this. And then what you can do is you kind of encourage yourself, hey, this is tough for a moment. It'll get better. It always does. And it then, seems, but you know what that seems? It's such practical information. Well, common I think, sense. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think that a lot of people, including myself, feel from time to time that it must be something out there. There's some kind of a big deal cosmic answer that we're going to find in one of the 12,000 books we'll read in our lifetime. And by God, if we don't pick the right book, we're going to miss it. Right. And all the answers are like right in here. Um, because we've looked at all the books, how many can there be that are written? We've pretty much read them all, I mean, if, if you want to learn anything. Mm -hmm. and, but when you look around, I think what it really comes down to, it's not so much the books, because, you know, I've gone into health food stores, and they've got a series of books from, you know, eating microbiotic to vegetarian to meat eating. And everybody within this whole spread has a really good opinion based on their material and their insights. Mm -hmm. And when I look at that, it kind of like makes everybody really right in their own opinion. So. As I look, I think, well, you know, the answers that we're looking for, the material that we're really searching out, lies within. And if we can go within, that's really where the answers are. And it's like a common sense thing. It's like you don't even need the books, per se. The books give you knowledge. They're really great things. But, I mean, what's the standard joke that everybody says? Well, if they got common sense, they'll be OK. Mm -hmm. And like that's really important. It's like we're looking for some secret teaching when the answer is like, Right there, two well, inches from your nose. Haven't we been made, in a sense, to feel through religious dogma and politics and all different kind of things that the answer is out there? And so the bad press seems to be that if the answer's in here, you're some kind of bad person. How can that possibly be? Yeah. We got the, uh, the opinion of looking outside of ourselves from the moment we were born. Um, 
The moment that you're born, you're looking outside. You're looking to your parents for some insight. You're looking to your parents to learn how to walk, to crawl, to talk, how to act, to use facial expressions. So when we're growing up, our whole insight is looking outside of ourself, okay? We're looking outside because at the moment we're born, we don't have a lot happening per se. We're helpless. Mm -hmm. We grow looking to study everything outside. Then slowly we start to become aware that we're like real people. We have opinions. We can affect different things different ways. And we see how we affect people in different ways. And all of a sudden it's sort of like, well, gee, you know, who am I? And this is when we start our search for looking within. Mm -hmm. However, when it comes to the important issues, we still look outside because we, it's sort of like a mom and a dad thing. You're looking out for that guidance. When eventually we have to look at ourselves and say, hey, you know what? The guidance is in me. I now need to start looking within to see what I have within. It's almost like a two-point education. When we're younger, we're looking without to find out how to do all the things that everybody else is doing. And then once we have it all down, then it's time to like look inside. Who am I? Because I see I'm different than that person over there. And how can I learn that? How can I reflect that? And then we, you know, sometimes we just use all the people out there, like the recession. Everybody's not in panic, but you're pressed. And so you're like, you're worried. You're, <clears throat> OK, well, if everybody out there is doing that, and if we follow that, then we get caught up in that same thing of, oh, no, what was me? I hope I can make it. When in your own reality, how many times have you made it before? Mm -hmm. Continuously. So instead of buying into the country going, oh, whoa, poor me, job rate, you should look at yourself and go, hey, I see that for outside of myself, but I as a personality. I've seen it. I've come through this before. I'm going to do all right. I'm going to stay positive on this. Things will work for me. OK, and then we have our people. This is very commonsensical, what you're talking about. Yeah. And everyone will be able to understand what you're saying. Then we have people deeply involved in yeah. studies of metaphysics. And they're going, yeah. well, gee, it's not just what I see around me. It's what I feel. You right. know, this vibrational pull is right. upon me. You know, and I've tried using the white light and the auric shield. And the, they got a whole list of things that go from here to Japan. And the crystals and, back, and, and the, the organ accumulators. The yeah. whole thing. And I'm not saying that any of those are not appropriate tools or even games mm -hmm. or even fun or something like that. But what about the people that feel they have this deeper sense of what's going on and that that still isn't really uh, working for them? If they have a deeper sense of what's going on, you think they would know then instead of like having to go to all of the other things to keep finding out and revalidating ourselves. As we begin to use the tools to educate ourselves, you know, like crystals and, and uh, you know, all the things they have today, like, God, it's, it's limitless. Um, <laughs> and I was like going to list them all, and I thought, wait a minute. Um, That's why I was saying right, the, 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 the lists are back, yeah. amazing. <clears throat> yep. Eventually, what, what we've <laughs> discovered is, is these tools really help us. They give us insights. They uh, help us understand other things. But the bottom line is, like most people have found, they only work sort of mm -hmm. and uh, for those of you who are using them when push come to shove you know and you're really out there counting on something what do you count on yourself not the tools um, I think that the thing that we're all looking for obviously is who is the being that can teach us and the being that can teach us is basically you um, you can learn how to teach yourself basically by allowing yourself to be um, we use tools to find out that there's more than what we had anticipated. But eventually, you drop the tools. And you have to find the ultimate game. And the ultimate game is God, or Yahweh, or Buddha, or Jehovah, or whoever you think it is. Like, pick who you think is pulling all the strings and having things evolve. You have to get your communication up with this being, or this sense of knowingness. It goes beyond the feeling that you get sometimes with crystals and pyramids and all these other things. It goes past the intuition sometimes that we think we get when we hear other worlds talking to us. I think that everything that we're doing is valid. I think that regardless of what we think or what we believe is valid for us and it helps us. I also believe that after a while we start to observe how we've used these tools to facilitate our growth. But now we're down to the bottom line. How does it all really work? Yes. Um, 
going inside and finding that thing that they call God, I'll just use that for lack of a better term because it's my favorite, um, <laughs> going inside and finding God or what that represents to us. Now after enough years we figured out it ain't what we learned in school, it ain't college. Um, <laughs> we find out that it isn't what we've learned <clears throat> out there. We find that somehow because of the tools we've used there is a deeper meaning. Yes. Not for the intellect, not even for the feeling, but for the overall knowing of the being. Um, if you look outside to you know, what you're doing now as a personality, how many of you have noticed that you're becoming a little more aware that you can look at people and have a deeper understanding of what they're really saying? We've noticed that, once again, because I'm a scientist, we as the human race are starting to see more and perceive more than we've ever seen before. And we're going to have to take all of our values and our understandings that have been given to us by generation upon generation, and we're going to have to adapt them to who we are now. It's like we're receiving more, for lack of a, a better term, divine insight within ourselves than we ever have received before. We're feeling more of a drive to understand not the mystical, magical stuff, but like just that part that I could touch so I could really understand that this might be a part of God somehow. Mm -hmm. And as we begin to expand, what most of us have forgotten is that this being that we call God is working just as hard to get in touch with us. As humans, we're looking at this and we're like, we're all trying to get to God. Why? When we already are a part of it. There's mm -hmm. nothing to get to. We are the experience and, and the expression. If we can use the tools which tell us to be a good person, use the things that are telling us that if we're a good person, there's a finer vibration, and in using all those insights to understand things, we eventually come to the conclusion that there is a God working just as hard as we are trying to get a hold of us as we're trying to get a hold of it. If we could understand that and um, start counting more and more on what's in here and using what is out there as our guiding post, not as the answers, then I think we're going to come into balance. I, I just really believe that for, for, for everybody. It's like... Um, I totally believe it, too. What you're talking about is where to look. Right. Uh, it would be uh, right. like you're lost in a market when you were a child. Mm -hmm. And your mom had always told you when you were lost in that market when you were a child, but if you ever get lost, stand <laughs> still. Right. And what does that do? Well, from, of course, uh, some of the teachings I've listened to you about and everything, now I understand that that really places you in present time. I'll almost like the divinity of present time yep. and so that you can receive an information but if two of you could be spinning around right. at exactly the same force of time you can call it vibration whatever you can break it down to the small most minute scientific doctrine that was ever born and uh, and still not find what you're looking for so I understand you certainly completely and I'm sure our right. audience does too the whole principle of present time and getting into that it's like a... They, My favorite. The, you're good at it. It yeah. has taught me an endless amount that gives me a reference point uh, to everything that's around me. Right, right. It is a difficult thing to get nowadays when everything seems to be so hurry-scurry and all right. that. Yeah, you know, just so much. I mean, if you could just get rid of everything else and just use the visual, you'd be bombarded. Right. I guess like... A zillion teachings, you know, and everybody's looking for one teaching that's going to best fit for them. Right. So if there's a six billion people, there are six billion techniques, and that one technique is going to work for everybody here. Um, in retrospect, you were saying, and the spinning around and mm -hmm. the time, if I could give one tool, it is present time. Um, as a human being or as the human species, as we're taught, most of our reality is either in the future or the past. We're either planning for things that are coming up or we're beating ourselves up for things that are over. Now, I've looked at how much time we spend in the future or the past, and when we do that, in our mind consciously, everything that is happening in this moment is sort of like on a back burner, not really here. When I observed that and I started looking for what they would call God, like where would God really be, I found that it would really be in the present moment, clear, centered, right here, right now. I find that also one of the major things that we're taught is that we're eternal, no beginning, no end. And yet as a human being, everybody's trying to get something finished. 
um, which is an end. <laughs> now, as I yes. look at my personality and what I'm taught as a human being, which is let's get an end to this, and then I look at or myself, let's get, let's get started, started or finished, one of the two, but nobody's ever enjoying like the middle part. <laughs> and, um, and here's God telling you like, hey, stay in, the, stay in the present moment, because then in the present moment, the future and the past simultaneously exist, and you're capable of actually seeing more. Now, what I mean by that is, <clears throat> I'm a business person, so I obviously plan things in the future, but I plan them in this moment. The thing that I don't have is attachments to the end results. The attachment to the end result is where most people get hung up because then they build the picture bigger and bigger to what the end result should look like. It should be a successful party. What's wrong with just having a party and let people decide if they're going to have fun or not? And then what happens if it's going to be a successful party and one thing goes off, and we all know something always goes off in every party. <laughs> it's mandatory, um, isn't right, it? Right, it's a mandatory thing, you know. Uh, <laughs> then we're upset, like our picture wasn't fulfilled. For me, in the present moment, I set what I need into progress, and I know that the universe or God will take care of it. Mm -hmm. And if I stay in present moment, if something comes up to deter that, and the moment it comes up, I'm there handled, ready to deal with it. I just, for one moment, to break in, and I'm sorry, I just want to uh, encourage our viewing audience uh, to listen to this because it's very vital information. The more you can stay with the moment, the more expansive you become. And we are in conversation with Dennis Adams. Go All ahead. All right. Let's take people who spend their time in the past. First of all, we know there's nothing you can do about it. It's already a done deal. And yet people who think they could have given a better answer. Did you ever notice that? Like you've, somebody asks you something, you give them your best answer in a moment, and then like three minutes later you go, why oh. didn't I say this? <laughs> if I would have just yes. said this, they would have understood Everyone's that. Everyone's experienced Right, it. and so everybody experiences that. And then what a lot of people do is they blame themselves for not giving as good an answer. And they go, you know, I could have given a better answer. Instead of coming back into present time and continuing, they start laboring what they could have done in the past. And the truth is, it's over. So worry and blame and judgment the, and all past. of those things take you to any other time than now. Than present, yeah, because it's something that presents a picture that isn't real in this moment. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people say, well, I don't know, you know, emotions are pretty present and how does all of this work? What's this present time thing? What mm -hmm. is it really about? Present time, there is more awareness. Bottom line, there is more awareness. In the present moment, you are actually capable of seeing things that have got you within this very split second position. And the amazing thing is, is you can also see what direction it's going to. If you're busy in the future, the past, you're not really seeing what's happening in the present moment. And so you really don't have your finger on the pulse. You have your finger on blame or guilt, which you know comes from the past because you should have done something else, or you're anticipating something in the future on the hopes and premises that it may even come, and in the meantime, you're missing all the fun stuff. It's like stop and smell the roses. You know, you're so busy out here or back there, you're not really seeing this. When you take the time to just center yourself, I mean, what do all of the basic metaphysics teach us? Center ourselves, bring ourselves into the present moment, concentrate on this right here, right now. And they tell us that's a spiritual directive. We need to take that spiritual directive and apply it in every minute of the day. Mm -hmm. Instead of just doing it when we're doing our special thing for God. I mean, 24 hours a day you're doing something special for God. That's I right. mean, the most special thing you're doing is like you're being alive. Being alive, yes. I mean, sometimes we totally forget this. Whatever this being is, or whatever it's about, it has the capacity to make you out of nothing and keep you alive. Now, some of us, when we forget, you know, like we wonder if anybody really loves us, look in a mirror. If you can see that your eyes are open and you're breathing, God loves you. Like the most important thing from what we can tell in the universe. It loves you by the very fact that, like, you're alive. So anytime you start wondering if I'm in present moment, I'm not in present moment, I'm doing the right thing, and we get bothered by the planet, stop for a second and go, hey, yeah, I'm alive, I'm alive, God loves me, check it out. And regardless what the planet is giving you, it ain't nowhere near as important as being part of the whole and being recognized by the whole because you are alive. 
I learned something very interesting, which is just another example of what you're talking about. It has to do with relationships, and everybody's on this big relationship bandwagon now yeah. because everybody wants one or thinks they do or whatever that is. And uh, there, somebody at one of your workshops that I was at was uh, talking about problems they were having in their work, in their relationship or whatever it was, and it turned out that everything that people argue about in relationships that take them out of harmony is either past, past or, or future. future. The only reason that a male and a female or a male and a male or a female and a female argue is because one of them goes and says, what about this time? And it slips out of present time and you bring something up from the past. Mm -hmm. Either you don't feel complete with it or it's that antagonizing thing that will send your mate or your friend off the deep end for whatever reason. And I must admit that since that time I have caught myself at a couple different times some doozies too. Yeah. There would have been some real eruptions and <laughs> noticing, you know, there's no way this can ever be solved because right. it's not now anyway. Right. What what am right. I doing? The greatest thing that I could tell couples in terms of relationships is when an argument starts, if one of you can stay in present moment, that means don't draw your sword and try to defend yourself with, oh yeah, well what about the time you did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. That's what arguments start over. Yes. Somebody will say, well what about dun 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 and all of a sudden because you're not clear you go, oh yeah, well what about dun 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 And then the next yes. thing you know is for no reason at all, because usually when you look at the material that you're arguing about, it was stupid anyhow. When you take a good look at it, all it was was an argument about the past, or about the future, mm -hmm. and it had really nothing to do with the present moment whatsoever. Where you're totally in love, right. or having a great relationship with that exact person right. in that exact moment, just uh, I think you're drawing swords is very yeah. cute. Yes. Yeah, that's <laughs> the best way I could put it. If one um, of you in the argument just stands there, stays in the present time, pretends they're God, stays in this moment and goes, okay, I understand that, and takes it and just hears what it's about and knows that whatever, I've discovered arguments can't continue. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, like, see, in order to get an argument to work, you've got to have the same amount of energy back. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it just kind of fizzles and falls apart, and you, like, go and have, I don't know, like, fun. So um, <laughs> I've noticed that, yeah, arguments fizzle if one person stays in present time. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that the other person kind of goes, like, wow, that was far out, because for those of you who are cosmic, um, your partner has just stopped you from piling up a whole bunch of negative karma. Another interesting <laughs> fact, yeah. people call into visions yeah. and sometimes they have something that they consider to be a severe problem and they would like for me to refer them to a psychic, a tarot card, a, you know, one of the mm -hmm. one of the ten possibilities of yeah. outside services available, astrologers and all of that. Uh, frankly, I prefer not to because I know that every single question that they've ever mentioned to me, or I'll get them to talk to me a little bit about it, they have the answer yeah, exactly they have the answer themselves. within themselves. But again, in going back to your uh, wonderful explanations of present time, I can see that they are out of that. And it's yeah. a very nice gift yeah. for people that can understand this. It's a nice gift to give someone else to help them mm -hmm. get back to that. In present time, I don't have to ask anybody my future or my past, and I don't have any questions because in present time, you know what's going on. So there's no like, well, gee, I'd like to know something there, I'd like to know something there. In the present time, believe it or not, because that's where the essence hangs out, there's a cleaner contact with the universal mind. And for some reason, if you can trust yourself, which brings you into the present moment to be more that you can be, then the answers are really there. Uh, and that's pretty slick in itself because then what happens is we start to realize that if we're part of the whole, we should have all the answers in. I mean, this being told us we're made to its image and likeness. Well, then if we're made to its image and likeness, if it has the answers, so should we. Mm -hmm. And the only thing we have to do to understand that is to understand goodness. And by goodness, you'll end up getting closer to present moment. And in present moment, all of a sudden, everything you're looking for in the books, you got in here. The beauty of that system is is I've watched people through my whole lifetime. We looked at the books and we looked at the teachers and we asked them for the answers to the question. I also observe that after they give us the question, if we honor the person, we'll still work it out to try and understand if that was really the correct answer. But only when we solve it ourselves will we believe it. Mm -hmm. And then only after we solve it do we believe in ourselves more. It just looks like we're believing in them out there. We've actually proved it to ourselves. It's a better piece of material. We know then that we can count on that a little later on. 
Um, and so the other part of that is is that in a sense we have to practice since we've been right. so far away from it and that it is okay to feel like you're practicing yeah. even if it's in its initial phases, I'm isn't practicing it? Practicing all the time. <laughs> but wow, is it fun? Uh -huh. See, because I'm having a good time. You know why? Because there is no end result. I know I'm eternal, therefore I don't really work for a finish. I work for the enjoyment of this moment exclusively. In each moment after this and after that, I work for that moment exclusively. Yeah, some things come to an end, some things come to a start, but that's just on the physical plane. That's not my overall attitude. Mm -hmm. My overall attitude is I'm enjoying every moment. I don't look for a moment two days from now where I'll peek out and go, yes, this is what I waited for. I take this, yes, this is what I waited for every split second of the day and I can enjoy myself more. There's just so much more to see, there's so much to understand and if with a little common sense you can just hang back and enjoy it all. Um, relationships, I'm going to hit one more time on that. Relationships, okay. Um, it's one of the things that does keep us in present time. I told you how to use the present time to do it and now here's one more piece in relationships if you could just understand this. In relationships, we get arguments. Say you kind of slip out of present time. So let's say Easy we're both in the argument. Easy to do. I'd like to point out that in any argument, both people are right. That's why they're in the argument. Now, just based on that piece of material alone, if you look at an argument, you would go, well, this is a redundant piece of material then with actually no function or purpose. Because obviously both people are right, that's why they're in the argument. Mm -hmm. So to try and convince the other person that they're wrong, is it, really, is it really going to happen? Not really. But if a person can stay in present time during the disagreement, one stays in present time, the other will eventually realize that what they're speaking of is a redundancy. And as they do it and they see the other person is holding center, they may realize they don't have to bring this up again. And both people win again. Mm -hmm. And becoming a better grand observer instead of always feeling that you have to be that focal point, energy center, bringing things to that crowning blow or whatever that yeah, is. And yeah. uh, Why wait for it when you can enjoy every second to get there? Uh, <laughs> good information, Dennis. I'm so grateful to you for coming from Mount Shasta to be on the show again. Well, this is such a joy. You know, it's like I appreciate what you do. You share with all these people. They get to hear all these different points of view and once again all these new insights. and. And let's face it, they're looking for the answer. The answer's in you, though. Keep listening to us for signposts. But listen to yourself, because we're just here to really show you that you're the answer, that you're the power that you seek, that you're the essence that you want. Thanks again, Dennis. To our viewers, you've been watching Visions. Uh, I will be uh, doing my annual uh, Whole Life Expo stint, and you'll see Dennis there <laughs> uh, doing our speeches. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again when you watch Visions next week. I'm Valley Amen, the New Age reporter. We'll see you real soon.